Welcome back. It's not just here in America that we see big tech colluding with the establishment. Shamefully, in China, the megalomaniac dictator Xi Jinping is being aided and abetted by a once great American company that has now descended into the gutter of brutality and evil. Under the rule of this appalling man, Tim Cook, chief executive of Apple, as the biggest protest since Tiananmen Square erupted across China in response to Xi Jinping's cruel and deranged zero COVID madness, Tim Cook secretly restricted the very function, airdrop, that protesters were using to organize and evade the regime's internet censorship. But this was just the latest collaboration between Apple and the communist thugs' crackdowns on freedom. Under Cook, Apple has become an empire of shame, the obedient lickspittle of the world's most brutal totalitarian regime. Last year, despite Cook's endless grandstanding about privacy here, Apple denied it to its Chinese users there, just as they did five years ago when they pulled virtual private network services from the App Store in China. They sucked up to the dictators by putting Apple's data center in China and handed over a billion dollars to a regime-backed ride-hailing company designed to crush American companies. Apple supported Xi Jinping's Muslim concentration camps through the slave labor that ended up in their supply chain, and then lobbied Congress against a bill that tried to stop it. Of course, they denied all this when it turned into a PR nightmare, just as this week they denied threatening to yank Twitter from their app store because they can't stand free speech in China or America. But who can believe a word the Apple CEO says? Tim Cook is now the publicist for the world's worst authoritarian dictator and biggest polluter. And so there are, in, in the environmental leadership today is very clear and it aligns completely with Apple's values. The, the Chinese uh, the uh, environmental Chi leaders, yes, the government. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're very fixated on on uh, doing the right things to avert climate change. What? Like building a new coal plant every week? China is the world's largest producer of carbon emissions, accounting for nearly a third of global output. According to Tim Cook, quote, that aligns completely with Apple's values. How about China's war on gay and lesbian rights? Does that align completely with Apple's values? Tim Cook, who is, as has been widely reported, gay, proudly speaks up for equal rights here in America. As do I. I've been an advocate for marriage equality for decades, long before most Democrats. The difference is I'm consistent about it. Unlike Tim Cook, who's the craven sycophant of a regime that is right now cracking down on the gay community in China, that censors gay scenes and plot lines on popular TV shows that forces a gay dating service off China's version of the App Store. And by the way, guess where all the blood money Apple have earned through their loyalty to the CCP is going in our political system? Tim Cook and just two other top Apple executives, Eddie Q and Phil Schiller, gave nearly half a million dollars personally to Democrats. No wonder Apple has just spent a record amount on lobbying Congress. But there's not enough corrupt blood money in all of China to scrub the stink off Apple's empire of shame. Red Apple, a once respected American company that now stands for slavery, genocide, censorship and oppression. And perhaps the most sickening aspect is the delusional, demented hypocrisy. Just watch this. Apple has always been at the core about changing the world. And arguably, you can't change the world if you're ignoring the world. I think that uh, silence is the ultimate consent. If you see something going on that's not right, the most powerful form of consent is to say nothing. Ah, oh, yes, changing the world. Silence is the ultimate consent. You mean like this in response to Fox Business's Hillary Vaughan this week? Do you support the Chinese people's right to protest? Do you regret restricting airdrop access that protesters used to evade surveillance from the Chinese government? Do you think it's problematic to do business with the communist Chinese party when they suppress human rights? Yeah. Silence is the most powerful form of consent. I quite agree, Tim Cook. Nearly 30 years ago, I lived in Hong Kong for a year and through my work met an amazing entrepreneur, Jimmy Lai, who also launched a successful newspaper, Apple Daily. 
As the Chinese regime started undermining democracy in Hong Kong, Jimmy Lai refused to buckle, even when they shut down his company and threw him into jail, where he remains to this day. The quizzling Tim Cook, who runs Apple and sucked up to the Chinese regime, is free, while the hero Jimmy Lai, who ran Apple daily and stood up to them, languishes in prison. If there were true justice in this world, it would be the other way round. Tim Cook's Apple is not just in China, it is of China, and that has to stop. We have to stop these global corporations that take every advantage of being American and then betray our values and our country. We need a new crime of economic treason, and Tim Cook should be first in line for prosecution. Tell us what you think on the new free Twitter at NextRevFNC and at Steve Hilton X and share this message when we post it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.